they're flying over the Franz Josef Glacier in New Zealand. It's just so vast. We are really on the top of the world here, aren't we? This sea of ice with its ancient blue-white peaks is one of nature's thermometers. And right now, the mercury is rising. Despite its awesome beauty, this glacier is melting before our eyes. What's happening here in New Zealand is also happening in lots of other places around the world. And it's just an indicator that as the temperatures increase, because the glaciers are so sensitive, they show what's happening to the temperatures and they're disappearing quite quickly. Australian professor David Caroli is one of the world's leading climatologists. When I look around, I see an extraordinarily beautiful place with heaps of snow. Yeah, and there is heaps of snow up here, but it's melting and the glacier itself is disappearing fast, really fast. The increasing temperatures are due to the greenhouse gases that we're putting into the atmosphere. And we know from the evidence all around us that those increasing temperatures are due to human activity. The impact of those temperature increases is obvious when you look at where the glacier used to be and where it is today. In the last 100 years, it's retreated two and a half kilometres. And that concerns scientists like Dr Wendy Lawson. You can see here, this is, this is where the um, surface was a week ago. And so now we have the surface about five centimetres lower. So there's been about five centimetres of melting over the last week or so. How sure are you that what we are doing as a society is affecting this glacier? I have absolutely no doubt that what humans are doing on the surface of this earth is contributing to the retreat of these glaciers. No, we're part of the story here. We're part of the problem. We're part of the problem, no doubt about that. The serious decline of these magnificent glaciers like the Franz Josef tells us a lot about our climate of the past 100 years. But what scientists are discovering today is crucial to unlocking the secrets of our future, helping to predict what the weather will be like in the next 100 years. We're now looking at the world 90 years on. What sort of a place is it? Well, that far into the future, it's going to be much warmer on average. What sort of temperatures are we talking about? Well, in these simulations, the world is about uh, three to four degrees Celsius warmer. That's the global average increase in temperature relative to the present. Australian meteorologist Tom Wigley is considered the best climate modeler in the world. He's come here to Colorado for the supercomputers, which help him take the guesswork out of predicting the weather. 130 years on, Australia doesn't just have a red centre. It's no, completely it's red com there, isn't it? Completely red, yes. According to Tom Wigley, what we're looking at here is not science fiction, but our future, based on precise mathematical calculations. Just to give you some perspective, over the last hundred years, the world has warmed by about um, six tenths of a degree Celsius. So we're talking about a warming at a rate that's five times as rapid as anything that human beings have experienced in the past. It doesn't sound much, just a few degrees. But if the scientists are correct, the effects will be disastrous and are already being felt. Last year, this American research team climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa to study the health of its glaciers and made a terrible discovery. Probably by about 10 to 20 years from now, uh, it will be completely gone. And what we see when we look at the ice fields of Kilimanjaro now are several very small ice fields. Some of them so small, they're just little needles sticking up in the middle of nowhere, just sticking up out of the floor of the crater. I bet you don't come in here too often, do you? It's freezing. <laughs> Dr. Mary Davis from Ohio State University says in future, her ice lab will be the only place in the world where we'll find the famed snows of Kilimanjaro. So what is that telling you about the temperature? That's indicating the temperature was just about at the melting point to allow... Uh... These ice cores are a snapshot of the history of the Earth's climate. This one was taken from close to the surface of the glacier. Compare it to a deeper core dating back 1,500 years, 
and the difference temperature makes is clear. You can see the difference in the bubbles. These are much smaller, they're rounder, and yeah. th this tells us that this ice was um, forming under much colder conditions than this ice up here. It's not just the shape of the bubbles that's revealing, but what's trapped inside them. The bubbles uh, hold greenhouse gases like uh, CO2 and methane that can actually be analyzed so that we can get a record of the concentrations back through time. And those concentrations of greenhouse gases are increasing rapidly. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, we've been pumping more and more into the atmosphere, the very gases held responsible for global warming. The 1990s was the hottest decade in over a thousand years. There's going to be more bushfires, there's going to be more droughts, and there's really going to be a lot more problems with, with extreme hot days, extreme heat waves and things like that. The warmer temperatures will also mean that snowfall is going to in fact be dramatically reduced. So, in, for instance, if you want to go skiing in Australia in the alpine areas in 30 to 50 years time, I'd be planning to go overseas. The global warming scenario is melting ice and snow will cause sea levels to rise by half a metre to a metre. This line is where the high tide is at present and in 30 to 50 years with the expected sea level rise that high tide mark is going to be right up where the bottoms of those buildings are and every time a storm comes along it's going to wash away the sand and really encroach on the houses. Well, would you want to live there knowing what you know? I wouldn't mind living there at the moment. I wouldn't want to live there in 30 years' time. It's not a long-term investment. So higher sea level and then storms as well means that there's very dramatic damage. And that damage will affect all the developed coastline in Australia. But it's also in uh, low-lying countries like Bangladesh where there will be massive flooding whenever there's a typhoon or tropical cyclone which will cause uh, waves and storm surges to inundate large areas of populated land. For the people of the Maldives, a rise in the sea level of a metre would see almost their entire nation end up underwater. In low-lying countries like the Netherlands, where they can afford to do so, they're already building barriers to keep the sea at bay. While the Dutch are experts at holding back the sea, there's not much they can do about the rain, and that has them really worried. For this tiny country, global warming is not a matter of if, just when. And the government here is now planning to evacuate people when the floods come. This is what they're afraid of. This past winter, Europe was deluged by unseasonally heavy rainfall. In Britain, the last 12 months were the wettest on record. The resulting floods were the worst experienced in 400 years. It could just be Mother Nature, or it could be, as leaders like Tony Blair believe, a sign of things to come. No country can opt out of global warming. If sea levels rise as forecast over this century, storm surges and flooding, which we currently expect once a century, may come as often as every four years. How high did the water get in this street? It came up to here. Um, some of them were a bit higher and some were a bit lower, but it did immerse the whole of the ground floors in all of them. Have you lived through anything like that before? Never, and I don't ever want to live through it again. Anything? It's everywhere, isn't it? I mean, the whole global weather's gone bananas, hasn't it? We should start doing things now because unless we plan now for these climate changes and unless we try to slow down the rate of climate change, we're going to have much more dramatic changes in the future. What science is now telling us about global warming is really turning up the heat on politicians around the world. And everyone is looking here to Washington DC to take the lead. So far, the lead is to do nothing. Despite a promise to cut CO2 emissions, George Bush has just done a major backflip, claiming the cost to the voter is simply too great. We'll be working with our allies to reduce greenhouse gases, but I will not accept a plan that will harm our economy and hurt American workers. I thank God for people like uh, 
George Bush in the United States and John Howard in Australia, who have some sense of proportion. Of course, Washington-based climate scientist Professor Fred Singer is the leading advocate of the notion there is no such thing as global warming. He completely dismisses any link between human activity and a hotter world. These world leaders that keep telling us that global warming is the greatest problem the world is facing are insane. I mean, this, this is absolutely unbelievable. They're insane? Yes. Ten years from now, we shall look back on this and say, how could people say such things? Fred Singer says it's about time we stop blaming ourselves and start blaming the weather. According to him, we need only look at the history of the Earth to see that some centuries are hot and some are cold. Look, the climate is changing all the time. It's getting warmer and colder. The weather changes all the time. Some people get hurt and some people benefit. So it's all a freak of nature? It's all done by nature, it certainly isn't done by man. The study of climate has always been contentious because it's so unpredictable. But in February of this year, this report saw the clearest consensus yet on global warming. 2,000 scientists, the signatures of 99 nations, for the first time, an agreement that global warming is happening and is caused by human activity. So no downplaying of the uncertainty of this science? Not at all. In fact, the conclusion is that despite these uncertainties, most of the warming over the last 50 years is likely to be due to increasing concentrations of greenhouse gases. 99 nations have signed off on it. Does that not give it any weight? No, this means 99 sets of politicians who know nothing about the science have agreed that this is a, a, a reasonable document, but they didn't draft it. They nope. were presented with a draft which they accepted. Written by scientists? Presumably. While Fred Singer is keen to discredit global warming, his critics are equally keen to discredit him, saying his opinion has been bought. Are you benefiting in any way from the oil industry, fuel industry, energy industry? No, I'm not. Um, I don't even own any stock and we don't uh, get any, uh, so any funds from any, any, any corporation or government. But we have since found on the website of the world's biggest oil company a donation to Fred Singer's organisation of $10,000. He now admits the payment but says he never asked for it or was told how to spend it. And it's not just big companies protecting their interests, it's entire nations. The US has just turned its back on the Kyoto Protocol on climate change, and Australia seems equally addicted to energy consumption. Our love affair grows stronger every day. Per capita, Australians produce more carbon dioxide emissions than anyone in the world. But the question is, how much are we prepared to sacrifice? According to David Caroli, the cuts would have to be huge. Probably by 80 to 90% below present day emissions. That's a pipe dream, isn't it? It's a pipe dream. People are not going to go back to driving horses and carts, and they're not going to go back to uh, going without electricity, going without their computers. So alternative energy systems need to be developed so that we can stop using fossil fuels to generate electricity, and we can generate electricity in other ways. If we do nothing, what sort of a future do we leave for our children? If we do nothing, climate change is going to get more and more dramatic, and the future will be more grim, and that means that for our children and our children's children, their life will be very different to ours. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.